find the following for the given matrix A. So here we want to compute the characteristic polynomial. We then want to find the eigenvalues and their corresponding eigenspaces. And then last but not least, we want to find the algebraic and geometric multiplicity of each eigenvalue. And here we have a beautiful 3 by 3 matrix A. Now in part A, we want to compute the characteristic polynomial. So our goal here is to find the determinant of matrix A minus lambda times the 3 by 3 identity. So here we go. The first thing that we need is this matrix A minus lambda times that 3 by 3 identity. So we have our matrix A, which is 2, 4, 3, 0, minus 1, 0, 3, 4, 2. And now we are going to add the 3 by 3 matrix minus lambda 0, 0, 0, minus lambda 0, 0, 0, minus lambda. And now combining up those like terms, going across the first row, we are left with 2 minus lambda 0, 3. We have 4 minus 1 minus lambda 4. And last but not least, we have 3, 0, 2 minus lambda. So now that we have this matrix, we are officially ready to find the characteristic binomial by taking the determinant. So we have the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix we just found. And I'm going to do a cofactor expansion across that first row. So this is going to leave us with 2 minus lambda multiplied by the determinant of the 2 by 2 matrix minus 1 minus lambda 4, 0, 2 minus lambda. Our second term is 0. And then we have plus 3 multiplied by the 2 by 2 determinant of 4 minus 1 minus lambda, 3, 0. So computing these 2 by 2 determinants, we have 2 minus lambda multiplied by a minus 1 minus lambda times 2 minus lambda minus 0, and plus 3 multiplied by 0 minus 3 times minus 1 minus lambda. And simplifying this, we can factor out that negative from the binomial minus 1 minus lambda and rewrite this as minus 1 plus lambda times 2 minus lambda squared. And then our second term will become plus 9 multiplied by 1 plus lambda. Now, factoring out a minus 1 plus lambda from both terms, we are left with 2 plus, excuse me, 2 minus lambda squared minus 9. And we can now expand that binomial product and combine up those like terms. So we are left here with a minus 1 plus lambda multiplied by 4 minus 4 lambda plus lambda squared minus 9. Combining those like terms, we have minus 1 plus lambda multiplied by lambda squared minus 4 lambda minus 5. And factoring that trinomial, we have minus 1 plus lambda multiplied by a lambda minus 5 times lambda plus 1. And look at that. We have two like terms here. So we can officially conclude now that the characteristic polynomial is equal to minus lambda plus 1 squared multiplied by lambda minus 5. So this is our characteristic polynomial for the given matrix A. And we are now officially ready to move on to part B where we are asked to find the eigenvalues of matrix A and their corresponding eigenspaces. 
So let's recall that to find the eigenvalues, we need to solve the characteristic equation. So the equation defined by the determinant of matrix A minus lambda times that 3 by 3 identity matrix equals 0. So taking the characteristic polynomial that we found in part A, we have minus lambda plus 1 squared multiplied by lambda minus 5, and we're setting this equal to 0. Now, we want to be careful here with our zero factor property. So we'll break this first one down into some extra detail. We have lambda plus 1 squared is equal to 0. And now we want to make a little love note here that because this factor is appearing two times, we have two resulting eigenvalues. So we think about this as lambda sub 1 is equal to lambda sub 2 equals negative 1. So here is our first eigen our first two eigenvalues. And then in case two here, we have lambda minus 5 equals 0, which produces the third eigenvalue, lambda sub 3, is equal to positive 5. Now, in order to find the eigenspaces corresponding to these eigenvalues, we need to consider two cases separately. So Let's recall that to find an eigenspace for each lambda, we need to find the null space of the matrix A minus lambda times the identity matrix. So in other words, we're solving that matrix equation, matrix A times vector X equals lambda times vector X. So case one, when lambda sub one equals lambda sub two equals negative one. So the first thing that we need to do here is find the matrix A minus a minus 1 multiplied by that 3 by 3 identity. So matrix A we know is 2, 4, 3, 0, negative 1, 0, 3, 4, 2. And we are adding this to the 3 by 3 identity matrix as it is. So 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And we'll give ourselves a little bit more space here. And we're ready now to combine up those like terms. So going across the first row, we have 3, 0, 3, 4, 0, 4, 3, 0, 3. So we can already see that linear dependence relationship amongst the column vectors. So we're now ready to row reduce this matrix to the row reduced echelon form to find the set of all possible non-trivial solutions. So taking that three by three matrix we just found, we are ready to start row reducing. So we can see we can simplify this matrix right off the bat. Dividing the first row by three, we're left with one, zero, one. Dividing the second row by four, we're left with one, zero, one. And dividing the third row by three, we're left with one, zero, one. Beautiful. So starting at our first pivot position, we can use this to eliminate the entries below it by multiplying the first row by negative one and adding it to the second row. And then we do the same thing with the first row and the third row. So this is leaving us with the matrix 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So we have attained that row reduced echelon form. And we can see that we have two free variables here. We can see that x sub 1 is defined as minus x sub 3. We can see that x sub 2 is free. And x sub 3 is also free. So using this linear system, we're ready to define the set of all possible non-trivial solutions. Now we know that vector x is a vector in R3, where x sub 1 is defined as minus x sub 3. x sub 2 is free, so it's just itself. And x sub 3 is free, so it is also just itself. Now notice how I've lined up these free variables so that we can separate this into the sum of two column vectors. We have the ve column vector corresponding to x sub 2. So this is 0 x sub 2, 0, plus the column vector minus x sub 3, 0, minus x sub 3. 
So now we are ready to go ahead and factor out these common scalar multiples, leaving us with x sub 2 multiplied by the vector 0, 1, 0 plus x sub 3 multiplied by the column vector minus 1, 0, 1. And this is, of course, such that x sub 2 and x sub 3 are free. So from this set of all possible non-trivial solutions, we're ready now to go ahead and define a basis for the eigenspace corresponding to lambda sub 1 equals lambda sub 2 equals negative 1. So we have the eigenspace e sub minus 1 is equal to the set of all scalar multiples of the vector 0, 1, 0, plus all scalar multiples of the vector negative 1, 0, 1. Now remember, alternatively, we can write this as the spanning set. So we have the span of the two vectors, 0, 1, 0, and negative 1, 0, 1. We need to give ourselves a little bit more room here, but we can see that this is our beautiful final answer for the basis of the eigenspace corresponding to lambda equals negative 1. So now that we have found this eigenspace, we are ready to consider case 2, where we have lambda sub 3 is equal to 5. So again, the first thing that we need to do is find matrix A minus 5 times that 3 by 3 identity. So our given matrix A is 2, 4, 3, 0, minus 1, 0, 3, 4, 2. And we are adding this to the 3 by 3 matrix, minus 5, 0, 0, 0, minus 5, 0, 0, 0, minus 5. And combining up those like terms, we are left with the 3 by 3 matrix, minus 3, 0, positive 3, 4, minus 6, 4, 3, 0, minus 3. So now that we have attained this matrix, we are ready to row reduce to row reduce echelon 4. So taking that 3 by 3 matrix we just found, we can begin by simplifying this matrix. Right, if we divide the first row by negative 3, we are left with 1, 0, minus 1. Dividing the second row by 2, we're left with 2, minus 3, 2. And dividing that third row by 3, we are left with 1, 0, minus 1. So we're ready now to take our first pivot position and use this to eliminate the entries below it. So we can do this by doing minus 2 times the first row plus the second row, and then doing minus the first row plus the third row, which leaves us with the matrix 1, 0, minus 1, 0, minus 3, 4, 0, 0, 0. So we have echelon form here, and we can now use our second pivot position and simply simplify this matrix by doing a scalar multiple of negative one-third times the second row, which leaves us with the matrix 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, minus four-thirds, 0, 0, 0. So we can see here that x sub 3 is a free variable. And this is equivalent to the linear system where x sub 1 is being defined as x sub 3, where x sub 2 is equal to positive 4 thirds times x sub 3, and x sub 3 is free. And we can now use this linear system to define the set of all possible non-trivial solutions. So x sub 3 is a vector in R3, where x sub 1 is defined as x sub 3, x sub 2 is defined as 4 thirds times x sub 3, and x sub 3 is free, so it's just itself. And factoring out that common scalar multiple x sub 3, we have x sub 3 multiplied by the vector 
1 4 thirds 1. And again, this is such that x sub 3 is free. And so we are officially ready now to go ahead and define the basis for the eigenspace corresponding to this eigenvalue. And so we can say that our eigenspace E sub 5 is equal to the set of all scalar multiples of the vector 1, 4 thirds 1. Or we can write this as the spanning set. We have the span of the vector 1, 4 thirds 1. And this answer is beautiful. There's nothing wrong with it. But I want you to keep in mind, let's suppose you want to remove that fraction. Well, remember that we can simply multiply each component of these vectors by that least common denominator, 3. So alternatively, we can write this as the set of all scalar multiples of the vector 3, 4, 3. And we can say that this is the span of the vector 3, 4, 3. So this is our beautiful final answer for the eigenspace, or the basis of the eigenspace, corresponding to lambda sub 3 equals 5. And we are now ready for the final part, part C, where we are asked to compute the algebraic and geometric multiplicity for each eigenvalue. So in order to find these multiplicities, we need to recall our characteristic polynomial, minus lambda plus 1 squared times lambda minus 5. And again, we have two cases. So case 1, when lambda sub 1 equals lambda sub 2 equals negative 1. So thinking about the algebraic multiplicity, when thinking about the algebraic multiplicity, we're going to be asking ourselves, how many times does each factor appear? So looking at our characteristic polynomial, we can see that the factor lambda plus 1 appears twice. So we are able to conclude that, therefore, this eigenvalue has an algebraic multiplicity of 2. Now when we're thinking about the geometric multiplicity, we are thinking about the dimension of the corresponding eigenspace. So we know that the eigenspace e sub negative 1 contains two vectors. So in other words, since the dimension of the eigenspace e sub negative 1 equals 2, we can conclude that therefore this eigenvalue has a geometric multiplicity of 2. So now we want to go ahead and do this same thing when we have lambda sub 3 is equal to 5. So thinking about the algebraic multiplicity first, we know that the factor lambda minus 5 appears one time. So therefore, we can conclude that the algebraic multiplicity of this eigenvalue is 1. And last but not least, thinking about the geometric multiplicity, we know that the dimension of the eigenspace E sub 5 is equal to 1 because the spanning set contains one vector. And so therefore, we can conclude that this eigenvalue has a geometric multiplicity of 1. And there you have it. This is our beautiful final answer, which completes the solution to this example.